Meanwhile elsewhere, back at their own B-plot for today, Parsley and Fyma are heading towards lackluster family drama of their own. First things first, Parsley invites Fym to spend the weekend with her family, because she refuses to go home to her mother, because reasons. And I truly must congratulate the show at this point, I'm being sincere. You see, Parsley is doing something nice to her friend, entirely from the goodness of her heart. She's just being a proper mate with no hidden agenda. The author has finally cracked the code to basic decency and human behavior, and I feel like that deserves a slight kudos. Of course, in any other show, this wouldn't be worth much more than a shrug, but that's the point we are at with this catastrophe. Any sign of logical, heartfelt behavior takes me by surprise. It's a respite from the utter hurl-inducing selfishness otherwise present throughout this shitfest. But that being said, the way this situation ends up manifesting makes little to no sense. Let's consider Fime's characterization. She is presented as the abrasive loner of the group, especially at this point of the story. She wants to keep her distance from the other girls, doubly so when it comes to private issues, hers or others. She wants her personal drama with her family to remain secret, that is undeniable. That being the case, it makes absolutely no sense that Parsley somehow knows that Fym lives with her mother in Lingarth. Doesn't your mom live in town? She's busy. At what context has that topic come up? And why would Fym divulge that information to Parsley? If Fym truly wishes to keep her distance from everyone else, to be left alone, if she wants to avoid excess sympathy or pity, she would tell everyone it's none of their business, or even simply lie about the fact. She's already lying about her mother being out of town, and thus she can't go home, which in itself doesn't follow any semblance of logic. Let me ask you this, have you ever come home from school while both of your parents are still at work? I would imagine so. You can unlock the door to your own home, stay at your own home, without your parents being there to greet you, right? Fime is a goddamn moron, and she is an awful liar. Now in a world where everyone inhabiting it isn't a drooling mustard brain, Fime should simply say that she's going back home, instead of revealing she plans to camp out in the woods, which will inevitably ignite Parsley's desire to help, because apparently she actually holds some semblance of empathy. Unlike, say, our heroic protagonist, the low-key racist of the group. Listen, you pointy don't sleep in the woods. You'll scare off the bats. <laughs> At least I got rid of all those damn nits. You see what I'm dealing with here? I'm trying my hardest to give a compliment to this show, but it's really difficult. So, about that family drama, what exactly is Fime's problem with her mother? Well, maybe we'll find out, since she just so happens to visit Parsley's blacksmith shop at that specific day, so that she can fix up a pair of shitty scissors. The writers honestly couldn't be bothered to come up with a better excuse. A pair of rusty old scissors. As if the magic of this universe couldn't just fix those up in a jiffy. And how do you even get your scissors into such a horrid shape? Did you shove them up your ass? What possible use could you even have for those? Anything you would wish to cut? I'm certain you can use magic for that. Or just buy a new pair. I'm sure that's easier and cheaper than bringing them to a fucking blacksmith. I would feel insulted, but this is High Guardian Spice, so it's honestly my fault. I'm expecting too much from a bunch of cunt huffing, anti working man, terminally online, professional victim types, as if any of them had ever even seen any kind of tool in person. 
let alone use them. Hey, time! Can you... I'm sorry, did you say time? Sure, she's my friend from High Guardian Academy. The school got all infested with Travers and was evacuated for the weekend, but her mom's away, so she's staying with us. I see. Time? Hi, Mom. Your school was evacuated. So instead of coming home, you came here to hide? I'm not hiding. I just didn't want to bother you. Bother, I haven't seen you since school started. I thought you'd be happier that way. What's going on up? Oh, hello again. It's Flora, right? It is. I see you've met my daughter. <laughs> Small world. I'll take her off your hands. Nonsense. We're just about to have brunch. Join us. No. I'd love to. <laughs> Time I remember when you were this little. Really? I was a dwarf baby? Time. Angie, you'll have to excuse my daughter. Her marksmanship always takes precedence over her tact. Yeah, I learned it from watching you, Mom. Now I'm not gonna lie, the first time I saw this exchange, my interest was ignited for a fleeting while. Those are some serious accusations from Fime. If the picture she's painting is even close to truth, then her mother must be some kind of oppressive, passive-aggressive, manipulative, ice queen of a mother. There's some ingredients for a truly effective character study here. Maybe she's the type who acts like a level-headed lady in the presence of others. But behind closed doors, she's a psychologically abusive tyrant to her daughter. Maybe Fime's abrasive nature stems from the way her mother treats her? If her mother truly is that awful, then I wouldn't blame Fime for running away from home. Is that what's going on here? Of course not! Because that would be interesting! The episode skirts around the issue the entire way through, with Fime constantly shooting Venom at her mother, without ever even hinting at the true reason for the animosity. It's never revealed what kind of scissors Fime's mom shoved up her arse to make her so hateful. For that, we have to wait all the way till episodes 7 and 8, where it is finally made clear. So, Fime, what horrid crime did your mother commit to make you want nothing to do with her? We all had to flee the fairy woods. The rivers dried up. The trees started dying. Dad stayed to help. He's trying to find a way to reverse the rot. He and my mom, they had a big fight about leaving. She dragged me to Lingarth. The woods are dying and, and she expects me to just sit there. This is my home. I need to help, not run away. That is not your choice to make. Your father and I have decided we are going to Scarborough Kingdom. What? Time. Resources are scarce. The fairy woods are no longer safe. Then come with us. You said it's not safe here, so why? I must stay and do what I can. This is my duty, not yours. Now go. Your mother brought you away from the dangerous Calamity Woods to safety so that you too could live a stable life as were your father's wishes. What an unforgivable act! Oh yes, but you wanted to stay behind and help your father. And do what exactly? You have no way of helping him. You are just some random kid with no special skills or knowledge. At best you would be in the way. There's no reason to entertain this tantrum any further. This is moronic. Fime is being a vicious bitch for absolutely no reason. Her mother has done nothing wrong. No matter how much teen angst you are carrying, you must realize that you are being unreasonable with your mother. Mommy, you are a cunt. How dare you drag me to safety from home? I wanted to stay behind and be totally useless and get swallowed by the rot, just like daddy. I know I shouldn't smack you, but I feel like I should smack you. And how does this conflict resolve in the end, I hear you asking? Well, the two of them have no further conversations on screen for the rest of the series. Then, 
Fafaim sees her mom turned into stone in episode 9, don't ask, which makes her sad. Yeah, your mother is in mortal danger, just like she was in mortal danger back in the woodlands. You see how this works, Faim? Maybe you should be less of an insufferable cunt about it. After it's all fixed, there's still no convo between them. Like the whole thing never happened. Which is awkward, to say the least. The mom isn't a character. I can't even say she's a plot device. She's a prop, a pathetic attempt by the writers to amp up the personal stakes for Fime whenever they feel like it. And then, at the very end of the final episode, we suddenly get this. We can use the vacation. Yeah, but I kind of want to get back. I want to learn more, grow stronger, and I think I want to hug my mom. Oh. What? She was stone last time. The show's idea of character development is having one of the heroines bitching about nothing and then conveniently doing a complete heel turn at the last second before the epilogue. An epilogue in which we get a whopping single still image to wrap everything up, because fuck actually writing a resolution, I guess. This plotline is an enormous waste of time, even whilst considering what show we are examining. In fact, I'd say this subplot is one of the worst narrative structure-wise. At least much of the bullshit in this show gets resolved in the same episode it is introduced, but this subplot has the goal to leave things unresolved for several episodes. It's trying to bait the audience into thinking there's something more complex going on with Fime's family, only to serve up yet another plate of nothing burgers. Not to mention that this plotline, which is supposed to give layers to one of the main heroines, makes them incredibly unlikable. Fime is mad, then she's not, because that's what it says in the script. Unless this is some kind of demented allegory for menstrual tantrums, I cannot fathom what the writer was thinking. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end, for liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.